well. Absolutely. Don't we all as well? After a difficult season in 2021, fingers crossed that the Falcons can bounce back strong in 2022. Mm. And you mentioned Mickey Arthur. I spoke a little bit with Lewis Reese here on the podcast about the impact that Mickey has had on the boys heading into this summer. Just how how vital of a role has he played so far in terms of the preparations? And, you know, is there anything you can tell us about his style um, and his methods as well? Some further so, insight. Something, something that I've noticed quite early with him is that he's fantastic with people. Um, I remember in our first chat, we, we kind of got together, we were in a room and he's there and I met him and I remember one of the first things I said to him was quite, it's quite an honour because I remember being a 10 year old boy watching the 4-3-8 game, Australia versus South Africa. Um, we all remember what, what, how amazing that game was and I remember being a 10 year old boy watching that game, falling in love with cricket at the time and I remember Mark Balcher hitting Brett Lee over his head for four. Um, to finish the game off and the camera kind of pans to the dressing room and I remember Mickey, Andre Nall, Aby de Villiers, everyone jumping over the balcony on on their way down to storm the field and I remember like it was just something that stuck with me with Mickey and I remember as a young boy watching him and never did I ever think we would be in a meeting room at Derbyshire so 10,000 miles away kind of sitting in a situation where I've developed as a cricketer to a point where I am now, where I'm actually in a room and he's giving me a speech on how he's going to take Derbyshire to this level that he wants to to elevate it to. Um, and I just kind of felt a little bit starstruck and just, uh, it was just, it was just a surreal feeling really. But first, one thing that stood out to me is uh, he's just fantastic with people. I think he reads people really well. Um, he's an incredible motivator. He, he, all he needs to do is just say a couple of things to you. And he knows that you feed off that. So you get people who are intrinsically motivated, extrinsically motivated. And I think he understands which, pe- which people are work in different ways. Um, I know he's got majority of the squad quite sussed out. Um, and once once you become once you become or once you know how to manage people, it becomes a lot easier to communicate with them. And I think that's that's something that a man manager needs to needs to do really well. Um, I know he's been fantastic with uh, the other side of the field, like with the support staff, with with the board. I know he's been fantastic with our supporters, holding forums with them, um, Q and A's with with the press as well. I know. He's thrown his everything into into the club, um, and from from our perspective, like of of the first initial real impact he's made on me, and of course it was a personal thing for me to do, um, was become fitter because I knew he had a he had a policy of you need to be under a certain certain threshold in order to play because if you're over a certain threshold, you don't play. It's simple as. Um, and obviously it scared a lot of the boys and everyone kind of, especially after the season, the injury ruled season we had last year um, to now, like it kind of just scared everyone and everyone just kind of got their asses in gear and we've got cracking on really. Well, of course, that'll be good news for the Derbyshire fans heading mm. into this summer. It's good to hear the impact that Mickey's had, to be honest. And I know it is very early days, but as you said, he is throwing his heart and soul into mm. this project. And Mickey, if you're listening to tonight's podcast, you've got an invite on the table to the County Mm. Cricket Podcast. It's always there, mate. We can have a discussion about all things international cricket, domestic crickets, and of course, those infamous shorts as well. But Matt, (laughs) we've spoken mostly there about the the strengths of that Derbyshire side. And I've just noticed that you are wearing Nottinghamshire gear in tonight's episode. So maybe this is (laughs) the perfect time to actually discuss the weaknesses of Derbyshire. From a fan's perspective, where do you see the weaknesses in this Falcons outfit? Which kind of bits can you pick apart and think they might be quite vulnerable in these places? I think you always have to go into a question like that with a sense of perspective in the, the budget that Derbyshire operate on. Um, yes, I've got my notch jacket on. And, <clears throat> excuse me, it'd be easy, you know, it'd be, it'd be easy for me to, to go in and just say, oh, the, the, you know, the Nottinghamshire, the uh, the, the champions of these Midlands, etc. And but but that's because you look at how much money they've got by comparison. Um, but 
I would say maybe when you look at what I've seen in the past with the um, Derbyshire, it's certainly in the T20, and forgive me for this, Justin, but the, the bowling does seem to be slightly way less. They can, I've seen them hit 200. They can easily, the batting, I mean, you look at people like Wayne Madsen, um, I also, um, Luce Deploy, who can, you know, they, they can all hit a long ball. But then it just seemed to me that they can't quite, they can't defend it or they will, if they're bowling for, they'll let opponents sort of take the game away from them a little bit. Mm. So I think if you look at the kind of, if, if you boil it down in particular, um, obviously it's quite a small ground as well. So any sort of spin or anything like that is going to get carted away quite quickly um, at Derby. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, so it's not so that's a small ground as well, so that shouldn't really have a massive impact. But and the fact that if they if they're unable to quite defend it, and then in the first class game as well, if they're unable to quite, you know, take that take that crucial wicket or break that crucial partnership, then that, the game can get away from you a little bit. Yeah. Um, so forgive me, you know, I'm I'm not <laughs> I'm trying to pick the words carefully because I know I'm talking to a member of no, okay. the pack. No, you're really um, but I do wonder if the batting is, is the, the strength mm. and then perhaps they just need to find that. So, I mean, you know, uh, Lackmail could be the answer. I mean, Mickey Arthur certainly has the answers better than I do. Um, but I do think that if, if they can find that little, that moment, of, that ability, that wicket-taking ability at the crucial time, then that might be the, the thing that sets them on a better path this year. I think um, from from our personal perspective, a weak point for us was figuring out how to close a game out, really. We get ourselves into a lot of winning positions, but we just did not get over the line. Um, I know we, we've had a couple of occasions, like the 50-over game last year against not um, the, the game against Warwickshire. And I know it's a, it just might be a sore subject for both of you because we got over the line, but it was doing that more often than not. We'd get ourselves in those positions, but then we'd fail. Um, so it's, it's kind of a deal, a case of handling pressure. So how are we going to handle pressure? And I think that's a big thing for us this season, going into the season now. Do you think the experience maybe that Mickey Arthur brings and in fact that the overseas signings, do you think, because I've always wondered if like good performances that don't lead to results can be a result of not having enough experience in the squad. Do you think that experience gives you a bit of a boost? Yeah, yeah. Well, experience goes a long way. Um, I mean, we, we had an inexperienced team attack last year, um, and that, that's that's just that's just what it was, um, and that's simple. You know, like that. Take the four day game, the county championship game against Notts, so Derbyshire v Notts at Derby, where you had the lights of Stuart Broad, um, Patterson, and. Luke Fletcher running into bowl, and we had the likes of Sam Connors, Ben Atkinson, and George Grimshaw, uh, just to name a couple. You know what I mean? And and there's there are years and years of experience between those the the, the vast experience between the two, um, and they put on a spectacle. They showed us how we should have bowled um, in that particular game. And and like as young cricketers, Ben Atkinson and I know Sam Connors went down and spoke to Stuart Broad and Luke Fletcher afterwards just to gain some knowledge and some experience. And I, and I suppose having someone like Saranga come in, we have that in our dressing room so we can share that and we can bounce ideas off him. Um, so, yeah, no, I can't see why it's a, what's a bad addition to our squad. And that right there, Matt, is why you're on tonight's episode, questions like that. That was an absolutely fantastic question. And, yeah, aside from strengths and weaknesses then, for that Derbyshire side, because we do have a lot of teams to cover tonight, just mm. one final thing, which is the player to watch. And Dustin, you've alluded to him there. I might as well select this one because I've got his stats right in front of me. But I've got to choose Ben Aitchison. He was fantastic last summer. Leading wicket taker for the club. 34 wickets at 23.29. Watch out for this guy. Tall, relatively quick, good strong action. Everything you want in a seam bowler. And alongside the likes of yourself, Dustin, Saranga Lackmouth, Sam Connors, Mikey Cohen. We'll have to wait and see if you can close out some games. That's a pretty good seam attack at Derbyshire's disposal to go alongside the likes of Wayne Madsen, Sham Massoud, Billy Goldman, Blair's Deploy, Lewis Reese, etc., etc. So we'll have to wait and see. But it could be an interesting season for Derbyshire. And of course, if you are in the Derby area, get yourself down to the Encora ground. That's all I'll say. But moving on 